Here we are. We're in Utah. We're getting ready to finish the soundtrack to our second film, Less Is Now. And uh, I think we're actually going to do a secret little unscripted meetup. Stay tuned for that. That's right. But first, we have a Utah jazz game to go to. Oh, yeah. Let's do it. Come on. You're never gonna hear me say this again. Uh -huh. This is my favorite mall in the country. That's because it's not really a mall, it's like this old train station. They turned it to a Whole Foods, and sadly they put some retail stores in here as well. But there's a really great bookstore, so maybe we can, we can take a look at all that. Come on. Get ready to be underwhelmed. I'm so excited. <laughs> well, at least he's giving us our quarters back. Yeah. Alright, I have a plan B. Let's go get some coffee. Okay. <laughs> okay. This is one of our favorite coffee shops in the entire country. It is called Blue Copper. All right, so we've been doing this little thing where people can text us their questions, their comments, their photos, their concerns, their smart LED remarks. Yes. 937-202-4654. Uh, We're gonna answer a few of those right now. All right, Ryan, here's one. Alex says, thanks a lot for everything you guys have done. It's helped me out, helped my friends as well. It's gonna give them the thumbs up. <laughs> And the muscle sign. I thought you were reaching for the eggplant emoji. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> and Joe is saying, do either of you do a daily or weekly journal? If so, what benefits do you find? You know what, I used to do a journal. I don't do it anymore. I'm gonna go back to doing a journal. Really? Yeah, I liked it. Okay, well, do this then. Neither one of us journal currently, comma, but I've been thinking about going back to a daily journal, period. I'll sign it with your name, Ryan. What else we got? We got Jennifer. Jennifer says, I'm looking forward to your meetup in Salt Lake City on Friday. I love the details. I totally manifested this this week. <laughs> I'll just with ha uh, uh, Details coming soon. Let me explain why this is exciting to me. I've been a Utah Jazz fan since I was a little kid. And I've seen them live in Los Angeles, but this is the first time I've ever seen them live here in Utah with other actual Utah fans. Go basketball! Josh, what happened? We lost at the buzzer. It was oh, yeah. an amazing, amazing game until the very end. <laughs> and then right up to it was a terrible game. Let's just say the home team did not basketball as well as the visiting team. Uh. So 
So we're here in Provo, Utah, which I have to say is has the most underrated music scene, just the best music scene in the entire country. Uh, you wouldn't think that until you come to a place like this, and it's not people concerned about becoming popular, being signed. There's just a lot of creativity per capita here, and it's people who are concerned with, with making the best, most meaningful music possible, and that's why we're here to work on another soundtrack for another film, because uh, we knew that, that Nate and Drew they uh, worked on the soundtrack for Minimalism. We knew that they could bring the emotion to the forefront and really help us capture what we were trying to communicate with our last film. And so we're doing it all over again with Less Is Now. This is the equipment room. Oh, yes! This is the gear. Oh, my God. You have to give me a second. I know. It's, <laughs> it take as long as you need. I, I feel the same you way. You guys are welcome to. Place oh, like with this second documentary, um, less is now. We ha we definitely had more of a hey, here's how we're gonna do this, right? With the first documentary, Drew um, and I had just finished um, working together with his band on, on the Parlor Hawk record. And he, he was just saying, hey, I've met these dudes. They're super cool. They need some music for this documentary on minimalism. What do you think? And it's funny because literally the first thing that popped into my mind was like, oh, minimal music? That's easy. Like, man, this is going to be a piece of cake. And it was not a piece of cake. <laughs> so, so what are we doing right now? We're, we're going to just finish up this track. We've got the string part that we like that's going to be kind of the foundation of this thing. And so now what we're going to do is we're basically just going to try to find some interesting sounds like that we can maybe use on like the rhythmic side of things. But this will get you in that room. They're just in the little percussion thing right to the right. Oh, so yeah. Bring, yeah. bring in some goat toes. <laughs> it's, only, it's only right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> See, like you can see how much the goat toes are pushing right there. Uh, like, I think it needs to be in now. We dead, but again, you know, it's like I think it needs to be in. laying down a track on banjo it's like it's easy to kind of riff on it for a while and then like when you actually record it it's like whoa this is hard to get it lined up perfectly okay yeah so what we'll do is we'll just get a couple layers wow. of this um rob will you just yell at me the chords that are coming yeah i know that that's going to be obnoxious or whatever sirens that are kind of like singing. Of these statues has a, a title that is applicable to to the player. John Stockton threading the needle. 
right? So in, in the NBA, in basketball, there are five major statistical categories, right? And there's only one player in the history of the NBA who holds the all-time record in two of those categories. And his name is John Stockton. We're going to hide in this corner back here, Yes. and we're going to do a, a hug line. I know they close at 6, so we have to, we have literally 35 minutes to get out of here. But before we do, I just want to thank you for being here. I, I, I didn't know if a dozen people would show up, or uh, however many people were here. This is truly amazing. Love people you think, Joe. Thank you so much. Minimalists.